All right, always a treat. Great Buckeye, former first-round pick back in 96. Terrific career with the Titans. And that's Eddie George, our buddy. Eddie, how are you? Tiki and Tierney, what's going on? Hey, man, I'm doing great, man. Great great to be alive today. Have a chance to see the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> boy, Good to have you. And it's, uh, hopefully everything is well. So uh, let's get into it. You know, I got to – let me start yeah. by asking about your – he's not really your colleague, but he went to Ohio State as well. Ezekiel Elliott – had a ton of expectations coming into the NFL season, mainly because of what he did in the preseason. And you know this from mm-hmm. making the jump. Once the game yeah. actually start counting, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a different. It's a, you know it's a different attack you have to have. Do you think he's it's learning that, out. or do you think it was just circumstances of, on that Giants game in Week One? You know, uh, he came in with a lot of fanfare, a lot of expectations. Uh, he listen. He's 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 a beast. I've watched him from his, his sophomore year at Ohio State up to this point, and he's he he's a mature running back. He's a violent runner. Um, he has to understand the nuance of the game. He's in that learning process. He, I mean, preseason speed is different from day first, first game speed, <laughs> and then the the regular season speed is different from the playoffs. So. Yep. That being said, you know, he's earning his stripes. And I think he'll adapt, he'll adjust to it. And, um, you know, you're just not going to go out there and run everybody over. You know, you got to – I think he has to learn how to set up his blocks, be a little bit more patient, um, you know, take what the defense gives you. Not every play is going to be a home run. You got to set up your runs. And that stuff takes time. So uh, people are expecting, you know, for him to break out 150 yards, 200 yards. Listen, my first game of the, in the NFL, I played against the Kansas City Chiefs. And that year, in 95, they were supposed to go. They were Sports Illustrated. Um, they were supposed to go to the Super Bowl that year. They had Neil Smith. They mm. had uh, Derek Thomas. The defense was loaded. And I guess, guess how many yards I had opening day that day? 35. Oh. 12. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. Four quarters of football. Wow. That's how fast it And people were looking at me like, what? This guy is tall, big, and slow. But the following week, <laughs> it slowed down for me. Went out to Jacksonville. They, you know, Roddy Thomas, the late Roddy Thomas, and I split time. And I had a big day. I had like 143 yards. So, from week one to week two, yes, it'll settle down, and he just has to settle down and allow the game to come to him versus feeling like he's got to, you know, be the leader and carry the brunt and try to break home runs. Gotcha. Eddie George with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Of course, uh, Eddie jumps on from time to time. We love his opinions. Really good guy doing some cool things now, which we'll get to uh, a little bit off the football field. Uh, that first game when you just uh, exploded on the scene for an amazing tw- – and I'm sure those 12 yards look good, though, Eddie. Don't sell yourself short, man. <laughs> your, your coach that day was Jeff Fisher. Now, I got to ask the tough question, man, and I'm not trying to low bridge anybody, but why in the world does Jeff Fisher still have a job? Um, there's a lot of other coaches out there probably wondering the same thing. I mean, you know, if you're not Bill Belichick – you know, I think every coach deserves to have an opportunity. And Jeff, you know, you look at his body of work, you know, it's filled with a lot of um, uh, eight and eights, you know, a lot, not winning seasons, a couple of uh, winning seasons here and there. But, you know, his philosophy, you know, what, he, what, he, what he's been able to do, what he's proven over time, it can happen. I think, um, you know, what he's inherited at, at the Rams was not a great situation. You know, the quarterback position has been in the stable for quite some time. Um, he's had to retool, rebuild the defense. Um, he's drafted. The draft he, that he's had, they've had because he's been there, has been pretty phenomenal, you know, with Tavon Austin and Todd Gurley. And once they shore up and find that playmaker at the quarterback position, this team can really get on the run. Listen, guys, we're at week one. And um, you have to understand the backstory for the Rams is, is more important than what you see in the product of the field on Monday. You know, this team went from St. Louis to Oxnard to Orange County down to um, back out to, I guess, uh, Century City now, all in a matter of six months. And I was in that same position going back in the 90s when we went from Houston to Memphis, Memphis to Nashville, Nashville to finally having our home. 
um, there with the Tennessee Titans, and those are some some, some hard days. And the having to travel and all of that is distracting. It's it's more wear and tear in your body than you realize, and uh, it's a lot. So I'm not making excuses for him, but I certainly understand, you know, what that team is going through behind the scenes because they're a tired team that's trying to find footing and really um, trying to find stability yeah. to be to be put to put forth a great product. So and that's what we're saying. But I think. You know, in the next few weeks, you're going to you're going to begin to see a different team. Yeah, I don't up, know about that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. And with all due respect, okay. that's Eddie, the great Eddie George. I, I'll give him a little pass for the travel because it's certainly more arduous than than I think. You know, fans uh-huh. and and me. I mean, guys, I didn't play. I get it. It's it's uplifting your entire life, and 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 that's taxing. He's been there for a long time. Hasn't won for about ten years. And I got I said this to Tiki the other day, Eddie. And, you know, maybe it's easier coming from a white guy. Hold on, with the Rams, you're saying he's been there? Yeah, he's been there for six years. He's done nothing. Nothing. You know, uh, but I said to Tiki the other day, I said, you know, this is what I don't get. Talk about equality, everything that's going on with Kaepernick. When you bleed this into the coaching ranks, when when you hear about the the criticisms that, you know, young African-American coaches don't get a chance, again, I I, I respect Jeff because he's a football guy. But if that's a black guy, he's bounced. He's not getting all these opportunities. That's just the way it is. Yeah, but I, well, I also believe that the Rams knew that they were going to be moving um, mm-hmm. at some point in time. And the best guy to get it done would be Jeff Fisher based off his pedigree, what he's done you know, with us prior to that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, he, he's been, I guess he's been given the benefit of the doubt. Um, who knows what goes into the decision-making behind closed doors? I'm pretty sure they're saying, like, okay, with the Rams, okay, you know, Jeff is Jeff Fisher. We're not going to just go out and hire a black guy just because it's the, the right thing to do. I think you want to hire the best person for the job, whether they're black, Chinese, uh, Indian, doesn't matter. Mm. And they believe, based on their situation, that they hired the best person mm. for the job. Now, okay. moving forward, you know, we have to see what he does with the season, you know, under – uh, the new situation, you know, the Rams, they, they've had their uh, sellout crowds um, in the preseason of 90,000 people because of the, the excitement that's there, the generating around the team. And um, he has, you have to give him the opportunity to see what he can do in a stable environment. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, no, you're right. What do you think about Todd Gurley? I think Todd is a beast. I mean, I've had a <laughs> chance to meet him. Uh, quite a few times, and um, when you watch him run, Teak, it's it's he's like a lean, this a, this a lean cut up muscle. Yeah. <laughs> he's just everywhere, and uh, kids, a former uh, track runner, was a hurdler, high school hurdler, just a gifted athlete, and um, he's serious about his craft. You know, there's you know how you can meet some kids, and it's well, it's the off the field stuff first. I mean, it's almost like he can care less about it. He he truly respects the game. He knows his history. He respects the pioneers that played before him. Um, and I, I think he's going to be one of the great backs in this game once they uh, really open up the lanes for him they find balance offensively. We're talking to our friend Eddie George, of course, uh, great Buckeye, first-round pick back in the day, terrific career. He's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Eddie, we don't have a ton of time here, but the Ohio State Buckeyes are taking on the Sooners. Now, we all know the Ohio State lost a ton of players uh, to the draft. What's, what can we expect once the schedule starts getting a little bit more yeah. competitive for your Buckeyes? Well, based off of what I've seen so far, and granted, they played Tulsa and uh, Bowling Green the first two weeks. They look really sharp, um, especially for a team that were a lot of question marks. You know, losing that many guys to the draft, you, you don't know what you have, especially at the receiver position, defensively, and so forth. It seems to me that they they reloaded. Uh, they have talent all over the football field, but they don't have the experience. So we're going to find out on Saturday night in Norman, Oklahoma, you know, just where they are. Um, if you can go on the road in a hostile environment against a team that's vying for a national championship, has a national championship caliber team, and with their backs against the walls, a must win for the seniors, no doubt about it. If they can weather that, then this tells me that Urban Meyer might have one of his best teams yet that people just don't know about. Wow. I mean, they have talent all over the field. Raekwon McMillan, 
Mike Weber at the running back position, a slew of wide receivers, a ton of weapons. And the one marquee name they do have is J.T. Barrett, who we know is a proven product because two years ago he was the offensive player of the year. <laughs> and uh, we know what happened last year going back and forth with Cardell Jones, now with this show. And I, I think, you know, um, Ohio State has an opportunity to really show the nation um, who they are and what to expect. And it's going to be an interesting year for them. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Let's talk about the Wendy's High School Heisman. That's obviously very similar to the Heisman Trophy, which you won back in your days as a, as a Buckeye. What, what's, what's, what's happening with the High School Heisman, Wendy's Heisman right now? Well, it's, it's, um, it's a great thing, man. It's been an inception since 1994. Um, I've been a part of it, um, you know, uh, through the years. Archie Griffin has been the face of it and the voice and the ambassador for Wendy's High School Heisman. And it's, and it's done to recognize the efforts and, and, and uh, the works of kids on and off the field in the classroom. You know, the core values of working harder, showing passion, uh, leading by example, and not cutting corners. You know, that that's in concert with Wendy's High School, Wendy's, the brand, and the Heisman. Um, what's interesting this year, Tiki, you know, hit the, the major bullet points is that the winners now get $10,000 to put toward their education. Mm. Prior to that, the money went to their high school nice. or, wow. or some other place, but it goes directly to the kid, which is amazing. That's wow. awesome. And um, what's also important is that we're short on time. So for kids to apply for this, they have the October 3rd to apply for the Wendy High School Heisman. It's a great deal. They come to New York. They, they are shown on television at the Heisman ceremony. I've had a chance to meet some of these great young men and women and for kids of all sports, not just football. So it's really to highlight and to showcase their efforts on the field and their accomplishments in the classroom and in their community. So it's a three-pronged approach. 